Do you start on time? Good morning, everyone. This is the Friday, January 21st, if I've got my date right, meeting of the elementary school building committee. And I see we have a quorum. So I want to uh, do the first order business, which is to make sure all the members of the committee can he hear and be heard. And as people can see, we also have Danisco design team members participating with us and our owner project manager, Margaret Wood from Answers. But I'm just gonna call out the names of the, um, of the committee members. And I'm doing it in the order on my screen so I can keep watching faces. So it won't be necessarily an alphabetical or other logical order. Paul? Present. Tammy? Present. Mike? Present. Sean? Present. Jonathan? Present. Rupert? I read you loud and clear. Great. Phoebe? Present. And Ben? Present. Okay, we have a few people. Um, Alicia has not signed in, but we are ready. We have a quorum, so we will be starting the meeting. Um, I want to see whether I can share my screen, unless Margaret has the agenda already up, just because we have a packed agenda. I just want to remind people what we're going to try to get through today um, and for any participants that don't have it in front of them. Um, let me just see whether I can efficiently do this. Margaret, unless you can pull it up. I asked you for the other ones. Uh, let me just see how I, of course, that's probably the one I can't. Let's see. Let's see whether this is it. No, that's the, can you pull it up for me, Margaret? Yeah, give me just a minute. I've, I've got to get to the town's website to pull it up. So. Okay. I also sent, <clears throat> we do have it. Okay. I have what you sent this morning. Is that what you want to pull up? No. What, what I want, said, I want the agenda for today. Um, let me just, yeah. yeah. Not, not the, uh, okay, wait a minute. I should be, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I sent it all to everyone and it is on the, Sorry, but the, the first order of business while well, Margaret searches for it, I, I'm just, I've got everything open except the agenda. So I'm not sure quite where I find it. Um, I, I've, I've got, got it. The agenda. Okay. I've got it. Okay, the, the first thing we're gonna be going through today and where the bulk of the meeting will be focused is the priorities. Um, can everyone see this? If Margaret makes it a little harder. So the first main is the evaluation criteria that was first sent to us in December, and we uh, had a quick discussion of it. We received so I received some comments and some questions of definitions. And what I hope to do today, um, as as Margaret will pull it up later, but get to some final version because Donesco will be wanting to use the priority and evaluation criteria in public meetings so that we get to a comfort level with it. Um, then we'll get a brief report on the education plan visioning session. One has been held and a, another is planned. And we do have a community forum planned for February 3rd and we have flyers for both. And I'll say, we can say a bit more about that. Um, Jonathan, I'm going to recruit you to say a few words on the net zero meeting, which the subcommittee meeting, which was extremely well attended and appreciated by the community because we had the Donisco technical people there and they could, it was an interactive discussion. And then um, we, we have a timeline um, for the whole project, but we also have a schedule for the committee meetings. And just to briefly review that, Phoebe and I have been working with a subgroup on outreach and Margaret's been working on outreach. And I'll just say a few words of where that is. So that is today's meeting and it's a packed agenda. So what I'm gonna try, we'll try to do is to try to keep us on time. Um, but the, and uh, Alicia needs, okay, thanks, Mike. Mike is saying Alicia is here, but in the audience. Alicia's um, in. Oh, you got her in? Okay, thank you. 
Okay, so I think um, we can take down the screen, Margaret, and just um, the 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 next one that we're going to be doing. I just want to make sure I welcome Alicia. Alicia Walker has joined us. Alicia, I want to make sure that you can hear and be heard. Alicia is a member of the committee. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? I can hear everyone. Thank you. Yes. That's great. Okay, Alicia, I just I took down the agenda, but what we're going to be starting on is the priority and criteria list. And what I Margaret's going to sh be showing on the screen is I received comments, suggestions from a few people, and I had some of my own. And many of the comments were, "What exactly is this? You know, um, you know, tell tell us more about what is in this element." Um, so it wasn't a take it off delete it, so it was a clarification. There were a few uh, suggestions of a potential delete, move, or add. So Margaret, if you could pull that up, what I'd like to do um, is, Donna, say a few words about how you're going to use this, and then we can just go through it line by line to get comments on it. The committee has all seen this a few times, and I personally think it's a great list. So it's more that we, we want to go through it. Um, yeah. So Margaret, are you able to pull it up? Um, Kathy, <clears throat> can I just ask one quick question? I'll take my hand down. Okay, um, yes. About the meetings. Um, it, would it be helpful to people if I send out invites for these meeting dates so that you have something in your calendar? Um, Zoom doesn't typically generate those. It, it, I'm happy to do it if it's helpful. I have them in my own calendar. Um, Margaret, once we get approval of this schedule, I will be working with Angela Paul staff. I um, mean, we can go ahead and book all of them so that you would get a meeting invite on them, but you know, with a okay a general uh, piece. And I will be posting this up on the website as well. So it would be better if those invites come out of the, um, because, so I will just talk about that, but getting okay. it on everyone's calendar. The one thing that you won't be seeing is meetings that are not being sponsored by the school, the building committee, such as the educational workshops. Those people will have to enter. So uh, Donna, I'm gonna turn this over to you and then as, and then we can just go through the list and people can add comments, ask questions, and we can see whether we can do it fairly efficiently, um, but just an overview on how you're going to use these would be good. Perfect, thank you. Um, so the purpose of this is really to have an, a, a list of priorities that is important to you as a community, which will help with the criteria that's below to objectively look at each and every option that we have to look at. Some of, uh, some of the options are probably going to be non-starters, but, but we have to go through some of them for MSBA's benefit and what we've agreed to with MSBA. But what we did is we put together this list, both um, the priorities, which we took, um, Kathy, from conversations with you all, and also the SOI and understanding the, um, what has been already out there. So comments on these is fabulous. Um, any input, we want to change anything, whether it's a priority or the criteria is great. So what the other thing that we haven't come to, I guess I shouldn't say terms, but an understanding is how we're going to rate the criteria. So maybe what we can do is we'll go through the list quickly and then spend a couple of minutes on how we want to evaluate and rank each of the options as it relates to the criteria. So if we... Does that Donna, just gonna, as I understand it, what we're not seeing is the complicated spreadsheet where across the top are the two sites that we'd be building on. Reno. All of the so, options so, that so, we're going to so be that's looking what the, at. That's what these are going to be compared to, cor correct? Correct, right. And right. Right, right now, you can expand it, but I, that we might be getting into the weeds on that. Yeah. But but what it what it what we'll be looking at are I think right now we have seven seven concepts. Um, because, and some of them are just Fort River alone, and that's part of the MSBA requirements. But once we get the priorities and evaluation criteria, we'll then have options to base those on. And each one of these will be based on right now, kind of um, 
sketches or concepts for each of the options. So you will have um, building kind of layouts and positioning on the sites is what you'll be looking at right now as we look at the PDP submission to MSBA. So if we, if we wanna just quickly go through the priorities, again, these were defined based on the SOI, SOI and I think the RFS and information that we've received. So happy to go through and um, clarify, add, delete, whatever we wanna do. So going off of the comments, which thank you very much for all of you for um, providing input in advance. The transit impacts, and, and maybe this is um, someone from the town side that could elaborate a little bit more on this. Our understanding is it, I don't know if the priority is to minimize busing, but how does each option relate to the transit or busing of students? So it might not be minimized, but it's, the transit impacts, it, it, but I'll allow you all to weigh in on that because this was definitely, our, our question was how do we define equity? Yeah. And so this is more of a conversation to hear from you all what you feel equity really means. So I don't know if anyone wants to weigh in. So can, can I just chime in here and say, this transit impacts, this, is, this is, goes way back to a list I made initially where I was trying to think about what might be considered equity impacts. So this came from me, it didn't come from a committee member and perhaps it doesn't belong here. Um, it, it, the, you know, there is a, an issue that I think has gotten a little bit confusing in the process that the, um, there may be um, you know, changes in the way students are assigned to these schools as a result. And it isn't something that we're gonna actually know because you know, the population is gonna change. There are gonna be other shifts over the course of the project. So this may be inappropriate, but I, I listed it there as three pretend, these three items, the SPED pathways, transit impacts and redistricting were sort of me thinking out loud because they came from me, they perhaps don't belong here at all. And the committee will have other things here for the community that, diff, that help evaluate equity relative to these options. Sorry, thank you, Margaret. So I'm just gonna wait, you know, including Tammy and Mike, if you wanna weigh in on this. I mean, this is, we can remove, reword, um, uh, expand or delete th th this level, because when you get, when we get down below, these will still be measured. You know, there will be a, a criteria that measures transit, Mike. You know, personally, and Tammy could, could disagree, and that's great. I think it, it's fine as is, um, okay. you know, because I think most of the transit impact on the school side are really about entry exit procedures. You know, like right now, uh, as Tammy lives every day, we have a lot more families driving their children to school. So, you know, even just where the buses loop is and all that has shifted because of COVID. So it's been a good realization for us that, you know, we, we really want to make sure that we have a thoughtful approach. Um, the town may have thoughts about you know, the green part of it and how long bus are on the road. We're all supportive of that, but from our end, it's really about safety and security um, as being the primary implications of it. You know, I think the schools, you know, they're not very far apart, the two sites. Uh, I don't know, two miles, one stoplight, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to minimize the difference, but but we're not talking about one being on the north end of town, another being five miles away and cross town and driving through town. So, Again, you know, uh, I think there may be very well community and town impacts of the transit that I really would trust the planning department and the town and community to weigh in on. For us, it's really around, we have a number of buses. We also have a number of vans because of the specialized programs that would be located at this new school and being very thoughtful in our approach about entry, exit and transition for our students. But Tammy, I don't know if you have other thoughts on that one, but that, that's where my mind goes when I think of transit impacts and, and equity uh, is making sure that our students have safe entries and smooth entries to school, not just around physical safety, but also just, you know, if you take a van, you shouldn't be walking then halfway around the school to get to your classroom, right? Like that's that's the kind of things that I think about because um, they're very much day to day. But Tammy, you know, I'm welcome to, if you want to weigh in. 
Well, thank you, Mike. Um, no, I, th <clears throat> I think what you said is, is really spot on. I really do think it's, you know, safety and security and having the opportunity for students to get off at the, the front of the school as needed, especially in inclement weather, um, as well as an, uh, an area for parents to drop off, which, which is separate than the buses because that can get a little dicey at times. Um, <clears throat> Mike, you didn't talk about redistrict, redistricting impacts, so I don't know if that's something that you can address because I feel like that's a broader topic than I can um, comment on, but I do think that it is a priority. Yeah, if I could jump in. Thank you, Tammy, for, for that. Um, sorry, I should lower my hand. Um, I think until we make a decision of which model we're going with, it's really hard to jump in with what the implications are because they both have implications but uh right now we're not there you know we will have two enrollment options to consider and so you know i want to be really cautious about going further because i don't want to look like there's an option that's been chosen until it's actually been chosen um but but i think you're the broader category of of how that works you know particularly if we look at the going to two schools in the district there will be relative to 2010 redistricting a minor redistricting um, minor not being the impact on individuals who are redistricted, minor being referencing the number of students or the quantity or percentage of students to be redistricted. But I think being really thoughtful about that and working with our transportation department and also recognizing the equity implications, Tammy's absolutely right. That's that'll be that that'll be important. It's just not something that we have enough data right now to be able to share anything helpful with. Okay, Margaret, you can remove priority to minimize. You can remove that comment then. Um, I want to make sure we can get through this. The, yeah. we, the we next, have a lot to talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the next, the next one, um, the next one, and this is again an outside set of questions of some people who looked at it. When the word future expansion and flexibility, there, there's just total agreement on flexibility. The question was for this particular project, are we, it will be measured later on in criteria. Is it a priority that this be designed so it can be expanded or should we remove the expansion part from the priority? That was the question that was raised, not the flexibility part. So should we change the priority as flexibility um, rather than a high level expansion. And, and I'm just asking that as a question and this was reviewers because later on, many of these get repeated under criteria. Jonathan. To me, I, I would leave expansion there. I mean, we, we may not conceive of a time or a need for it, um, but uh, as, as we know from the schools that we have, um, things can change and populations can change. So unless it negatively impacts something else, I, I would opt to leave it personally. Okay. And, it, you know, again, if there's agreement on it, Mike, if you're in agreement, we can remove the comment and, and leave the wording. My only comment was uh, really for the design team uh, my under, and the OPM. Uh, my understanding is that it's a requirement of MSBA to build that in, that, that you have to show where expansion could be. So. I'm not saying it's not a priority. I just don't know if, if this is something that's mandated anyway, why, you know. Well, I think I Mike, know. this is more um, as you start looking at the options, yeah. how how does expansion work with one of the options? Right. Yeah, so, it, so it's under, it's under criteria. Another. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think it might just be make that, perhaps I'm reading it right now. I just might make that more clear because I think some people might say one option doesn't have the ability to expand. And my understanding is that, that we can't, provide an option that doesn't have the ability to expand. So uh, we, we can provide it, it, the, the ultimate solution has to have, have to, right. has to have it, but, but as we weigh and look at the options, one option might not work. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we could remove the co comment because it, every, as everyone will see that when we get to criteria, um, uh, so the, on the net zero capacity, um, one of the things I put this comment in, and Jonathan was at the meeting, there was a discussion of whether we should, as a committee, set a target for um, something called energy use intensity. So this was just a question. Um, and I, it may be that it's more on criteria later, Donna, um, because it affects costs. So, well, so you, could, you could reword it, Kathy, if you want to say, 
how well does this option respond to the town bylaws or, you know, make it, you know, um, because uh, the, the, there's more to net zero than just the EUI. And yep. so um, I, I feel that, again, you know, as we look at the options, this is all going to be as we look at the options. So you, know, you can almost insert that at the end of each one of these. So how does each option uh, meet the criteria of the town for net zero? Okay, so we can remove that and then we'll just reword it to be clearer. Kathy, you see Alicia's hand up. Yeah, Alicia. Thank you, and sorry, I um, am multitasking because I do have two of my kids home waiting for COVID tests. So I apologize, but I am still a little bit confused. And so I want to bring us back for a second. Um, in terms of one, I'm still not clear on to how exactly we're going to be using this document. So I think it's a great document for us to talk about, get our ideas together, our expectations and our priorities. But will we be looking at this as like a rating scale when we're looking at the options? Like how closely does each option meet this? And are we gonna be like a one to five or something like that? Or are we just saying, these are the things we wanna make sure not to miss, but that would be in almost every option anyways. So how well are these things complying to what's listed here? Um, and then also for that, for the equity piece, I'm not sure if we defined what equity is. I think we identified some things that could happen and can be considered under an equity piece, but like, what are we considering as the actual definition of equity? Because busing and redistricting are pieces, but that's not what equity is. Um, and then also in terms of things like like the net zero and like the construction costs, I, I still am wondering, is there a target that we're looking at? Like, are we trying to keep construction costs as low as possible? Do we have a specific number? Um, like, what is the goal there? And I think even if we take out EU, I am still wondering for net zero the same way, how will we be measuring that? And like, what are we looking for? So, so thank you, Alicia. Yes, so it is two things. Um, you, you identify what your priorities are right, um, what's most important to the community. And we, again, we'll be looking at seven options, at least for now, and you need to, and the criteria that's below the priorities um, are going to be measured for each of the options. And the criteria should relate to the priorities up above. So this is, I know we're not gonna get through all of this today, but we do want to create a measurement, um, whether it's uh, not um, good, good, bad, and um, excellent, or we, we need a rating system. And that is one thing that we wanted to talk about today. You know, we can go a very simple rating system, but you, we want to rate each of the criteria for each of the options as it relates to the priorities up above. And so the criteria, or the priorities are gonna inform the criteria and how best to rate them for each of the options. So I, does that help answer that question? Um, yes, and so I think my follow-up is just, so is that what we're trying to determine right now? Yes, yeah, so what okay. we wanted to do was get the list. I understand what the priorities are, make sure that they're clear and that they meet the community's um, priorities and, and why are we here today, right? And then the criteria down below, we wanna refine those to make sure if, if something's redundant, get rid of it. We, we don't, we're not looking to have a list a mile long. We just wanna make it so that each criteria can be weighed um, objectively for each option based on their uh, priorities. Okay, thank you, that is helpful. Phoebe. Um, just a follow-up question to that. Um, seven options seems like a lot, right? So um, will we have the opportunity to come back to priorities after that is narrowed down? Because I think based on options, not necessarily that our priorities change because it's all based on you know criteria and everything else, but um, I, I think that there could be a shift in how we look at all of these different things, for instance, um, what a specific site or, or, or a specific building configuration 
um, looks like uh, when we're thinking of what our definition of equity is or what um, you know construction costs look like, those kinds of things. So does this, do we have the option to sort of revisit this after we have that narrowed down list or have even chosen, you know, select one or two? Um, we, you can modify the list, but, but ideally the priorities that we're defining now is going to help inform which, dis, which option is the best option that meets these priorities. The seven options we agree, um, some of them are just mandated by MSBA, such as um, what is a renovation of the existing building? We just have to. Um, and, and we know that really ultimately isn't going to make the, make the cut, but, but we have to evaluate it. So, so there, there, we have seven options because we have two sites and then we also have MSBA's requirements. But ideally, you, you set your priorities and you know, ultimately your, the, the preferred solution will achieve and, and meet these priorities. So, so there are gonna be some options that are just gonna come off the table. Um, I, I think the, and again, same thing with the criteria as we go down, you know, it's our job collectively to make sure that the ultimate solution meets the criteria and the priorities. So I don't think you necessarily want to modify them. You just want to measure the options as it relates to your priorities. And, and in the real world, as we all know, there will be compromises. Um, you, you might not nail every single one of these, but you want to get as close as possible to meeting all of your priorities for the ultimate solution. Does that Thank help? You. Okay. Thanks, Donna. Um, the other, the um, other comments just before we move off priority list to criteria, is the question of is the construction impact on a butter a high level? Is this a top priority or not? It wasn't a question of not wanting to look at it. Um, and then uh, the future, the same kind of question on the future use of the building that we're not addressing that you can think of, would you pick um, the building that's in better shape you might want to leave standing or would you think of it as what else we're we going to use? Is this a top priority for consideration or is it one of the criteria that would be used as we're looking down? The, those are all the questions. They weren't questions about do we want this on the list? It was whether this is a top level priority. Yeah, agreed. And, and Kathy, I would say construction impact on a butters could just be a, a criteria. I, I don't I don't think that it necessarily needs to be a priority. Okay. Uh, of course, we want to be sensitive to our neighbors and different options are, are going to demonstrate a better neighbor than others. And that could just go to criteria. And then and then same thing for the future use of building, you know, is the best solution for the school, right, is, is the use of the, I hate to say the word abandoned, but not use building. Um, again, that could just be a cri criteria. Okay. And then the only other comment was down below, we do emphasize space for outdoor learning and play. At least initially, I heard that in the listening sessions. Um, the, the, so is that a high level priority? Again, it's down in the criteria. So these were, these were comments that- No, it, helpful. Uh, and, and we could, um, under educational program, we could just include, right? Okay. How well does the ideal education fit with Renault? So including, um, space for outdoor learning. Like, That's great. Let, okay. Okay. So if everyone's okay, okay, I see Alicia's hand is up. I want to make sure we get to criteria also. Alicia. Uh, sorry. I just have one more point just to go off of what Phoebe said, because I'm thinking more about the re-evaluation afterwards and not that it would need to be in this same exact format, but thinking about things like if we were to make a certain decision and we're looking at the other school or Crocker Farm and we're thinking about equity, like we're going to have to look at that differently once we select an option and what that's gonna mean, especially in terms of things like redistricting and busing that can't be actually figured out until after we have a selection chosen. Um, so I think that 
it might be important to go back after we narrow it down with like a more refined set of expectations. But with that comment, I'm okay with moving forward. Also, thank you, Kathy. Okay. So what, what people are gonna see, and Donna can walk us through these, but um, there are fewer comments on these and many of the criteria just take from priorities. Now they're in a criteria that, that there's gonna be an evaluation across the different um, potential options. And so some, of, Donna, I got some written comments just on a, um, over time, people weren't sure how you're gonna measure some of these, you know, what the metrics are gonna be, but there wasn't a disagreement with these as criteria. Um, no, that's great. So just for clarification purposes under education, um, first we have the educational program, right? That, that will be developed and refined. And then we'll have MSBA space summary, which will identify the size of the spaces and then we also want to talk about as part of the educational program, your spatial relationships and adjacencies and what works best for the programs and how they interact with each other, time on learning, et cetera. So once we have the educational program and MSBA's criteria or space summaries, we'll be using those as we talk about size of spaces. So for example, if we're just doing a renovation, um, it's, it's a little unique because you have large buildings, but um, maybe the cafeteria doesn't meet the criteria of, of the size of the space that MSBA's guidelines recommend, right? So yes, um, all sizes of all program spaces would be included. Flexible small groups, same thing, right? Um, maybe you only get 100 square foot instead of maybe the needed 250 square foot for flexible small groups. So yes, that would be included. And then um, commonantes is a very important component um, in the educational program. So this would absolutely be included in the configuration and adjacency of teaching spaces. Um, the pedagogy flexibility, really what that means is just making sure as we've all learned, open classroom ideas from the seventies might not be where we wanna be today. And who's to say that that might not change in 20 years? I'm not saying we're ever gonna go back to open classroom, uh, lesson learned, right? Don't, don't look back, but um, you know, reflecting back, we just wanna make sure that we have built in flexibility for the changes in which um, education is delivered. And I see Allison's hand is up. Yes, Allison. hi, thank you. The MSBA space considerations, was this uh, designed before uh, the pandemic because the space needs after the pandemic, which feels like something that might kind of impact us going forward in different capacities is been really different. So I'm wondering what are the space guidelines that we're following? MSBA has not modified their guidelines. And we've had multiple conversations with them with, as you can imagine, many districts that have started the process or in the process since 2020. The goal is, you know, if we can demonstrate, we might need a little more space and it is demonstrated through the educational program, MSBA will support it. Um, it, it really is going to be about the flexibility, how how a classroom might be able to be enlarged due to situations like this, um, but MSB has not modified their um, guidelines. Um, and so I would just want us to keep in mind that small group spaces also have to accommodate, uh, accommodate those expectations of shifting if there is a pandemic concern, not just classrooms. Yes, and, and MSBA doesn't necessarily have um, a square footage associated with small groups. So that can be defined through us, through the ed program and our space summary with MSBA. Thank you. Tammy. Thank you. Um, I just want to bear in mind too that um, aside from Comenantes, uh, which, you know, could, would mandate a particular, a typical like teaching space, however, that's designed. I also think it's important to consider the three district programs for our students that have special needs. Um, in terms of 
I, you know, I don't know what the MS, I don't know, all your call letters, whatever, um, MSEB, whatever, um, <clears throat> are around that. And of particular note, and I don't know if this is the place to say it, something like drywall <laughs> in that classroom is not going to be going to be worthwhile. Um, but I do think that it's something to really consider and think about in terms of design space, because at least two of those three district programs are going to require um, like a reflection room. And I know that state has some mandates around that right now, but at the same time, it is something to consider that's separate of a small learning space. Yeah, thank um, and you. And that would yep. require particular materials. Yep. So, so um, the MSBA and DESE actually, um, Desi more so, will be reading the educational program as it relates to your special educational programs. And the goal is always to have them integrated the best that we can um, when it's appropriate. And so, yes, when we say optimized configuration and adjacency of teaching spaces, it's every program, every space. And if you have special requirements for a particular program, there are some programs that we've had where integration in, in the other, within the other classrooms or grade levels is, wasn't appropriate. It, ju it just wasn't appropriate. And MSBA supports that and DESE supports it. DESE has to bless, bless the special ed component of this project. So um, all of that will be taken into consideration. As for the built environment, Tamara, such as um, perhaps not drywall, perhaps not pendant lights hanging from the ceilings, nothing on the walls, all of that will come out through the design, which that those will be givens once we establish the parameters of each of the programs. So all of the educational evaluation criteria, we will have a set size of all of the spaces and some, some of your district-wide programs may require more spaces or specialized spaces. I love the word reflection room. I love it. Um, it's better than a quiet room or some of the uh, de-escalation rooms. So that's wonderful. Um, all of, so we will have a, a space summary identifying all of the program requirements. The educational program will talk about the relationship, spatial relationships and adjacency needs. When we start looking at these criteria and weighing them against all of the options, some options are just not going to be able to support your educational needs as well as others. And, and that's, that's what we want. We want to look at it objectively and say, you know, um, just keeping the existing building the way it is without making modifications isn't going to meet, I'm making this up, but isn't going to make, meet your educational requirements. And so you rate that one much less or rank it much less than you would, would uh, say a new school. Thank you, but Donna, I think that's really helpful. And you know, maybe at some point for the general public, a few more words can be in there so we can just see special needs and stuff. So it, we don't need to do it now so that okay. people know that that goes in, into all of this. So, so yeah, maybe we just want to make sure that we're clear. It meets all educational programmatic needs or something, yep. right? Okay. So um, go down to construction impacts. So here, here there were, it was purely um, definitional. So a few words were added, construction costs, uh, site construction costs. And then um, I added uh, an outside reviewer asked where was the site related ge geology topography wetlands where is that and is that here or is it under site, you know, wh where are you going to put those findings so it wasn't a does it belong here but it was looking at later on we have site and here we have construction. Um, so, sure. try, so, so I'm just explaining what these comments are and I see that Mike's hand is up. Also, um, so um, I'm, I didn't mean to, I just was trying to explain what this ad is, what the, the comment was, where exactly are those things? <laughs> it wasn't so much um, put them here. Sure. Yeah, Mike, I mean, just to, yeah, my two cents is I think it should be in every place because I think uh, it's going to drive a lot of decision making. Um, 
right? So there's a lot of variables that come from that that are gonna affect all the things that are above and all the things that are below on this chart. So um, I know it's uh, it could look repetitive, but I, I, I think, you know, I don't wanna underestimate the impact of looking at uh, kind of all the, the construction and site uh, costs that come with it, because I think it really is a defining characteristic of the analysis. Um, the equity piece, all those pieces are gonna be affected by what, what we learn about the sites. So, so as we go through these, this list, Margaret's cleaning it up a little bit. Um, I, I just wanna to touch on duration. So it really, it's a construction impact, not necessarily, a, I'll say it differently. The duration impact was was meant, and we can clarify it to be: is it 24 months? Is it 18 months? A renovation addition might take longer because you've got to move the children around because you don't have swing space. So the duration impact to be weighed against each of the options should be based on duration. How long is it going to take to? do the construction for each of the options. The cost of the duration is going to be built into the building construction cost, okay. right? So, so if the duration is 18 months, I'm making this up for new construction, but the duration's 24 months for a renovation addition, just because you have to do it in phases, will be, in, will be reflected in the construction cost. So the duration impact is really meant for duration, not cost. So it should, just, it should say years, it's amount of it time. Be, yes, okay. yes. So it should just be time. So Margaret, just change it to time under duration. Sean's hand is up. Yeah, well, we know estimated MSBA reimbursement rates for each of the options when we do this evaluation. Yes. I know, I know it could vary based on the option and based on the, um, so when we evaluate something like building construction costs, where we look at like net cost per student or net cost per square foot or something like that to, to evaluate them against each other. It, we can. Uh, we can do it that way. You can just look at the cost to the town. Okay. Um, right. It, it's, it will be up to you all, Margaret. Right. Um, yeah. A lot of times towns don't necessarily, don't necessarily care about the total cost. They're more concerned about the Their impact cost, yeah. to the town. So we can certainly take a look at that. A renovation addition, you know, you'll receive additional reimbursement from the state depending on the level of renovation. Mm -hmm. um, but the question then just be, will become if, if the cost to renovate and add to it still exceeds new construction, that additional reimbursement still might, might not. end up costing you more than if a new school. Uh, right. right, that makes sense. So, yeah. And then one other quick question, um, and it may be in the next section. So, so based on some of these options may result in cost savings, operating cost savings. Is that what we were thinking with annual operating expenses in the next section? Yeah, right. Okay, all right, thank you. So, so I think the last, Number five under construction impact site related to geology. Did was did was this added here? It's in red, so I'm assuming. Yeah. So so I this is the one Kathy was just asking about. So I just basically wrapped it into this comment, Perfect. and I'm going to take it out. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, Donna, I, so I was asking whether it should go here or under site, and Mike suggested to go two places because it will. It's both. It will be related to the cost. Um, so, so that was just a succession. Yep. Um, and and the only reason I put it as a separate one is to flag it. You know, someone literally looked at this list and said, we have really big differences between these two sites, including wetlands. So it uh -huh. was to highlight the fact that, yes, of course, this will be looked at. Um, Can I? Um... Can I just say, I, I do have a question about whether wetlands per se is a cost impact. It, it's, it's, a, it's a design impact on the site because it, it you know, we're really talking about Fort River here where, there's a, where there was a wetland boundary. It's not strictly speaking a cost issue. So I would be tempted to leave in site related 
geology, topography, and take out wetland, but just asking that, asking that mostly of the design team for. Yeah, I think. Uh, wetlands I, wetlands you, can right. infect the uh, stormwater mitigation approaches. Okay, so, so let's it, leave it. And, and, it, uh, and it can also be a non cost impact on just site usage, you just can't use the site because it's because yeah. it's restricted. So it really kind of belongs to both. Okay, then we'll put it in both. All right, so that look okay to everybody and we'll keep going. Yep. And the red here, Donna, on life cycle cost analysis, because I didn't know what L LCCA was. So it, it's not that I added it. It's just I added it as a definition. And then I thought you meant annual operating expenses. So I put the word operating in, um, but I, I wasn't quite sure. So it's Sean's question on what you meant on number two. Yes, thank you. So um, the life cycle cost analysis, what we'll be doing is taking a look at the, let's just say the mechanical systems, right? That's probably the largest or even, even plumbing or water, but we'll look at what the first cost is for a particular system and then how, how much it costs for you to maintain it and operate it um, compared to another one. Some might have a, sh a, a less expensive upfront cost but it might take, it might cost you more to operate and replace it down the road. It might be a shorter lifespan. So that's what the life cycle cost analysis is. Um, I see Jonathan, I'll let him. So uh, my question, I'm not sure that it, this would necessarily fall under number two, but it could, but this is one of the places where comparing the um, renovation, various renovation expansion um, models versus a new building might show up with regard to the net zero compliance because under the bylaw we don't have you know renovation the renovation portions of a, of a building don't necessarily have to comply with the bylaw so you might have costs I, i'm wondering if the cost would vary and show up here does that make for sense the net, for the net zero right for the ones that don't fully have to, for the options that don't fully have to meet the net zero. So if we have a new building, we have to fully meet the bylaw. If we have a renovation expansion, then the addition has to meet the bylaw, but technically the renovation does not. And so there might be, you know, our PV might cover only the, for example, the, the electrical energy used for the addition versus the rest of the building. Yeah, so, you know, Jonathan, that's a, that raises a good point. The life cycle cost analysis is really, we didn't take into consideration the PVs and that. Typically, this would be related to the systems. Just so, maintaining the system. So, so somewhere so, we want to capture that metric. And so, it's probably not here. But yeah, I'm just trying to think this through. And I, I, um, your thoughts on this are helpful. All of your thoughts are helpful on this. Um, this really would be, I'm just gonna use an example because we wanna be net zero. If we go all electric and we're unable to, um, let's just say we're looking at a VRF system as an all electric system, right? It has a, an initial first cost lower than say a chill beam system. However, the the, you know, the, it, it might cost a little bit more. You need, you need more energy to operate it as well as you're going to have to replace it sooner than what you would replace a, a chill beam system. So that's what we really oh, sure. meant when we were looking at the life cycle cost analysis. Um, it, the, the question really just becomes where do we want to put the PVs? And we understand the bylaws to purchase them um, if possible, right. If, if it meets 10% or less of, of the project or construction cost. So the question really is where do we want to put the, that requirement as it relates to the options that we're looking at? Um, and, and maybe it just goes into the construction cost and we weigh it that way because it's not necessarily an operational cost. 
would there though be a potential operational cost? I don't know if I, I, I it's been a couple of days since I've looked at this full list um, for if we have to purchase additional power for the parts that were in an option that doesn't, you know, that has a renovation in it, you know, do we record that someplace? Cause that, that would be an ongoing cost. Yeah, you're right. I think, I think if you look at it um, maybe a little differently, but yeah, so a renovation addition might not be as efficient as a new, as new construction. So your overall square footage might be greater than a new, than a new school. So therefore you're going to have more um, power requirements and therefore you're going to have to purchase more solar. D does that make sense? Again, I, yeah, I think I, so. I think everyone just wants to ask when you're looking at these criteria, finish the sentence as it relates to each of the options, right? So we're weighing these against the, the options that we'll be looking at. So I agree, you can put the cost of solar here, um, but that might actually go under construction costs or, or project costs more than it goes under operational costs. So I, I see both Sean's hand up and, and Rupert's hand are up. So, so I might recommend something slightly different. So for annual operating expenses, I could see us having subcategories or maybe it's just ro all rolled in there, but I think busing could probably go under annual operating expenses because that I think that that's treated like an operating expense, but that could be okay. maybe a separate, a separate line item. Um, I could see staffing being a cost there. And I think getting a little bit to Jonathan's point, maybe utilities could be a cost there because the most, the, the a net zero building, Assume I assume we're going to have no heating expenses or low heating expenses, um, so we could maybe build in utility impacts under operating expenses, and then I could also see it under life cycle in terms of the upfront cost of the um, of the system, and then what the payback period is based on our our savings. And that might be one way to compare different options: is what is the payback period? Um, so. At a, at a renovated school, it might be much longer because the savings aren't as great. Yeah, so under annual operating expenses, I, I think we do want to, these can be subcategories. Um, and I think that's what Margaret's doing. I don't think we want to get into the weeds too much. Um, Sean, you might be our guy going forward where MSBA is going to be asking what the cost is um, to operate the building after it's completed to make sure that the town understands what it's gonna to cost to operate a building. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna to have to be breaking those out um, down the road. We're not necessarily gonna do it for each of the options. These might be more qualitative at this point than actual numbers, right? But um, I think annual operating expenses include busing, staffing, um, utilities, um, you know, what, what it costs to operate a building, right? So the question just really becomes, do we want to get into the weeds on that? But, but um, Margaret, you changed the item one to utility cost. And I, I still think you wanna do a life cycle cost analysis because that's not necessarily utility. Yeah, you I, wanna I, weigh the options. I agree. I also thought having life cycle and then do annual operating and have these be subcategories, I Agreed. think is what's on it. So we, yeah. we can reconfigure that, but it's just to make it clear that these are all pieces of annual Included operating. in it, yeah. Okay. So Rupert, you you had your hand up, but you took it down. Did you, did you it get covered? Yes, I'm all set. Sean uh, covered it even better than what I was thinking. Okay. And Rupert, we look forward to working with you on all of this too, right? To get your input. Um, Thank you so much. You're the one, you're the one who's going <laughs> to, we're turning this building over to you. Vivian's got her hand up too. Yeah. So just quickly, so solar purchase then, would that fall under as a subcategory of the life cycle costs? And I think we should also, uh, if it's still under consideration, add the ge uh, potential geothermal, because that's a significant piece to assess for all these options. Well, I think, yeah, with that go on your life cycle. Yeah, it's a first cost, not an operating cost. True. So I'm just kind of wondering where it goes because I think as we assess the 
the viability of it, there is a life cycle analysis that we do for geothermal. So, so I agree with that. So I think, I think with the life cycle, we'll be looking at the system. So if, if we're gonna do an all electric VRF system, that's pretty straightforward, right? You, you have your upfront first cost and then your operating costs and replacement costs. If we're yeah. gonna do say a chill beam system, which is gonna require uh, ground source um, yeah. heat, then, then you would have to build in the cost of the geothermal into that. Into that system. Into that Correct. system. Yeah. Does, but again, as worse. Does it make sense to add it as a separate line item under construction impact so that people see it? Well, because not, no. So, so here's the challenge, right? Um, the system that we select, assuming we can do, uh, achieve net zero in any way on either site, that is going to be determined independent of, so we're gonna look at really, are we gonna do a geothermal system or are we gonna do an all electric VRF system or, or, or a combination thereof or something um, for hopefully any of the options. It really is going to be the town's decision, which is the best way you would like to achieve net zero. So one option, again, answer, finish, finish the question, building construction cost for each of these options. What is the, right? We're weighing the cost of construction for renovation, new construction, a renovation addition. So we're not using, are we picking geothermal or a VRF system? We're comparing these against the options. That I think has to be a separate conversation, unless there is a site that there may be us. site considerations. If, if, if yeah. but is that a deter how, how do you, if I'm just hypothetically, if geothermal isn't possible at Wildwood, I'm making it up, but it is possible at Fort River and the, the, preferred solution is a geothermal system over a VRF system, then maybe we have, that is how you have to phrase it. But, yeah. but, but if, if both sites can do geothermal and VRF or a different all electric solution, the decision isn't, we're not comparing systems in this, we're comparing the options in this. So we would like to know before we get to this part, what is the direction the town would like for, to achieve their net zero? So ideally we are comparing the same basis of design for each one of these. Does, so does, does that make sense? Yeah, I think you're, Donna, you're saying don't add it as a separate line. It'll I don't be think we can because yeah. because yeah. If, if you want to put it in there, it would be a yes or no. Can geothermal, but but we don't know that's the decision of the town right now, right? So we're, we're taking these criteria and applying it against each of the options that we're developing. We're not saying does it make sense to do geothermal versus an all electric VRF system? We're not saying that here. So let me, can I just to ask another question? So I agree with I agree with you. I guess my question is because people will ask, where is that? Right? Does it belong in building construction costs or site construction costs? I think it belongs in building construction costs because it's related to the operation of the building. I'm just going to make a su suggestion. This seems to me a wording issue. So let's just remove Keep it going. as a top level criteria and answer that. Um, yeah. Because I want to make sure we get through and I'm conscious of time. Yeah, um, thank you, Kathy. And may I just suggest that, that, Jonathan, we do something similar to this as we're looking at 
your net zero options. I, I, that, I absolutely agree. I think that's an excellent place. And I hope I didn't inadvertently cause you us to spin not. out here. You did <laughs> not. You're, you're helping us think it through. This is what we wanted. But, but you know, at that point, hopefully the town will have decided we're going with uh, a geothermal system because it can be supported on both sites. So now what we're doing is we're weighing the option, we're weighing this criteria based on the same basis of design for each of the options. So, so Sean, I saw your hand went up and then it went down. So I, I didn't mean to- Yeah, I, I had a wording recommendation, but if we're gonna handle that offline, I'll just, wait, we can keep going. Great. Uh, you know, I just like to get through it because I'm conscious of time. I, I think this is great, by the way, we didn't have a chance to do this on January 5th. Um, so Margaret, if you can scroll down, I think yeah. we're getting near to the bottom of this. We are. Okay, so the question on uh, expansion was the same as above. This is from an outside reviewer. Um, and I think you answered it, Donna, that, that for MSBA purposes, we have to at least consider this. Um, and then the second, I'm just explaining the questions is, yep. and then the question was, is pre-K, um, and this is of Mike and Tamara, is, is pre-K in the potential future, does this get left on the list? So that was a question for this, this building project. So uh, what I can answer is that the town and Sean uh, has been involved with this are working with the um, with folks in our preschool about potential options, uh, both zero to three and then potentially more um, three to five year old seats. Um, you know, I think it's at its, you know, we've had two reports come through. Um, but you know, where the funding would be long term funding is especially now that the federal federal program that was slated to increase preschool funding seems like it's not moving the way it looked like a couple of months ago it would move did seem like it was moving and that's a huge financial uh, piece that uh, you know all our folks who are knowledgeable in the preschool world suggested uh, if it happened it would be a game changer um, it's not clear that the game is changing uh, on the financial side of how to afford uh, such an expansion. So, you know, it's a little hard to know exactly how that'll play out because I don't believe the town is gonna be in a position to fund, fund a massive expansion of our preschool program um, or the schools. And, and that's why we're really relying on the federal government uh, in their initial plan had a tremendous number of uh, federal dollars going towards this. So, um, you know, I, I think it's without the federal support, it's sort of receding, uh, not in terms of importance, but in terms of practicality and feasibility. Um, in my mind, we do have a wonderful site for our preschool. It was only built 20 years ago. It was built specifically for the needs of young students. Um, and so, um, you know, to me, it's it's not that preschool in general is a priority, but as part of this project, um, I think it's appropriately placed in future expansion and flexibility not in terms of uh, a core principle of the project at the moment. Yeah, so, I, was I, I don't think it needs to go that. away because we don't know the future holds. But, you know, we're, uh, I'll say for me, I'm very disappointed that um, that federal infusion doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Yeah, that that is extremely disappointing, Mike. I, I agreed. I, I, I agree. I think maybe if you say building expansion, enrollment growth, you know, you could say uh, including potentially pre-K. Um, I, I don't think we want to call it out per se, because who knows what the future is going to hold. If we can um, expand the building, it's, it's going to go horizontal and vertical. So we just can include that as part of the considerations as we're thinking about expansion. Okay, so we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave it in for the moment. Well, Donna, can oh, we, we were suggesting rolling it up to building expansion and she was going to she was going to move it up to the the number one. So Donna, again, this is kind of a word. Margaret can turn with that me. over okay. to you. Right, Mike, that's what you were suggesting, right? Yeah. Okay. And I think if you scroll down, I think those were the. Um, we probably should focus on net zero, but there, I think we're at the end of. Yep. Oh, we have community. We have community as well. So, well, it was a question of impact. You know, is there a cost? Is it a fence? Um, do you, this this was just um, a qualifying. And Jonathan, I just wanted to make and Rupert, do we have the pieces on net zero as criteria that we need? Um, there weren't any com didn't receive any comments on this. 
this is you could put PVs on here as well, right? The question yeah. um, as it related to that. Or the more and more I'm thinking about this, Jonathan, my head just keeps going back to the <laughs> to the net zero group. And I, I just really think that we want to um, maybe offline you and the design team create a similar exercise. Similar effort. Yeah. So I think if we scroll down, I think that's the end of this. Um, yep. Yep. Do I just quickly address does construction impact on our butters? Does this include fence? How assessed? So the construction impact on a butters isn't necessarily are you getting a fence or not? It it is more of as as an example, um, if the existing bill, if if the new construction is going to be ten feet, I know we have bylaws and zoning bylaws and stuff, but but is it going to, uh, you know, a forty foot high building going to be up against a butter? Is that a good neighbor? Is it? Um, oh, that's the construction impact. So construction uh, impacts would be maybe. Um, go ahead, Brett. We've had a couple of examples where we've had a site with unsuitable soils that had to be activated, chucked off and, 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 and brought back on. And that could be uh, scores of 18 wheeler dump trucks driving through the neighborhood. Is that gonna happen? What's the construction route? It's things like that. Can another one might be, in? yeah, another one might be the drilling, drilling of the geothermal system of, of the wells, right? Um, how does that impact or Neighborhoods uh, can get very uh, nervous about if they've already got wet basements, if the project's going to make them wetter. So that are some of the things that we hear. Jonathan had his hand up. Yeah, I see yeah, Jonathan. I mean, just went. You know, abutters often also worry about, you know, light spillover from parking lots exactly. um, and just, you know, general generally changes can can engender concern from from abutters change yeah. is bad so i think i think under sorry kathy under construction impact it's, it's really twofold um one is the potentially construction impact right the the temporary impact from construction but then but then there's also the overall impact mm -hmm. on abutters some people say i can deal with construction but i don't want double the number of kids showing up in my neighborhood. How is that? I'm not gonna be able to get out of my driveway, right? Like sometimes the the effect okay. of the construction is important. Okay, that's helpful. As I said, these were just questions. No, um, no, that's great. And and happy to clarify because we know what we're talking about. You can't read my mind though, Kathy. But <laughs> so, um, and then the future use of non-selected building, um, you know, I, I leave it all to you to decide how that is an important consideration for this project. I'll say that you're very fortunate to, to be able to have that conversation um, and, and that you're actually going to have extra space and, and potentially a, an asset that you can reuse. Okay, so we can just do this as a definition of this is the kind of thing you'd be thinking about. Um, yep. And the last two were, um, I think last two, I said last two before was one, one to know what a contextually sensitive design meant. And when you say efficient attainment, does that mean cost under um, number two? Yeah, so, so for contextually sensitive design would be how well does the design fit within the built within the site, within the neighborhood as relates to the neighbors. So it's contextually, does the overall solution fit well within the neighborhood and, and community? Okay. And then I, I think we want to reword um, number two, because basically I, I think we want to say allows if achieves Towns net zero requirements or something. Forget about stretch code because you're going beyond stretch code. Um, a green school, that's an MSBA term, right? We can get rid of that. So, you know, if, if we're looking at this specifically as it relates to energy, 
we can say net by uh, net zero bylaws. If if it's related to the overall sustainability of a building, as it as as it reflects lead or New England chips, um, that too could be looked at. But I think I think the intent here was from an energy perspective. So net zero bylaw requirements, I think, is fine. And then. Again, there were some other aspects as it relates to natural light and daylighting. And, you know, we say meets ADA requirements efficiently. We had this conversation in the office just real quick. Of course, each option has to meet ADA or even more stringently, um, the mass accessibility code requirements, uh, AAB. However, a renovation might not meet the code as efficiently as a new construction. So I don't know if that necessarily needs to go here, um, but it might so, help. Donna, I, I would take this out because I That's think it, it, it makes people think that we're not. And honestly, the existing, the existing buildings are all on one floor. There's not any complexity right yep, now. We're fine, go ahead, take it out. I, th I think that's it uh, awesome. in terms of things. So what I, what I would suggest is you you work with this, Donna, to, to make sure the wording makes sense um, yep. as we've done it. And then this can be then used. Um, if, and I, I just want to look around the committee. Um, are we comfortable that we at least have enough of an understanding about this, that this can be a working document. Um, and if you take it down, then I can see everybody. Um, if anyone has an, uh, uh, Margaret, if you stop showing the screen, maybe we can yeah, see the I'm page. I'm trying. Okay. So I'm just, um, my suggestion would be that we get this back. So we have it in our documents, the way we've changed it. And you've done whatever wordsmithing Sean can send in the words he had, and we make it part of the packet that this, the final, and then you will have it as a working document um, for the community forum and for other, for your use. Does, any, does everyone, I guess the way I would say, I can see nods ahead. Does anyone object to that approach? No hands went up. Okay, so Kathy, I'm sorry. Yeah. My my hand is up. I okay. The, the 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 last part that we haven't gotten to, and maybe we just are going to have to address it because we're out of time this week. Is I I would like everyone. We need to come up with a matrix, a rubrics to to now rank. So do we want to use excellent, good, adequate? Um, okay and poor? Do we want to use a rating system like that? Do we want to rank it the, you know, good, neutral, unacceptable? Like we now need to, as we look at the seven options, evaluate each of the criteria. Do you want to put, we, not all of them are dollar signs. So I don't think we want to use, you know, inexpensive, you know, affordable and, and, not affordable or something. So, so we need a matrix or rubrics to measure. Um, in the past, we've used, um, Rick, help me out, um, unaccept or, or neutral and well, good or? There's, we used to refer to the matrix kind of like the consumer reports matrix where they had an icon you know, a fully black circle was great, an empty circle was poor, and you could get things in, in between. And that's just a graphic thing. Uh, we've used, uh, you know, red, yellow, green. Right, you've you know, used green, color. Good, red, I, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of red, yellow, green, because I think uh, people don't need to understand the yeah. symbol. Okay, so so those those are the, so now and, we and, just and from a, from a And there could eventually get to be a points metric, you know, those of us that review contractors and, and submit uh, DCAN evaluations, you know, from fair to excellent, there's a one to five ranking. And if you get to the point where somebody asks, why is this the best option? Because it scored the best. 
eventually you might find the, the, a need to convert to numerical. So I, I'm going to suggest, um, you know, I, I don't want to try to poll 12 people right now on the best way. If, if you could feed us back three choices of yep, a way of doing perfect. this and, and just, and maybe even do a, 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 a picture with, you know, a sample. We, we have three things across the top or four things. This is the way color would look. I, I come from a world with uh, scales of five and that was when Alicia asked are useful because um, the very, something if it really is superlative gets more points. So I don't mind having the points behind something, but um, giving, giving, and then three becomes the neutral. You know, it's neither great nor not. But if you could feed us back and I'll send it out to the committee and have people make choices, you know, and then we can, we can, we can maybe get to a conclusion. Does that sound like an approach to people that would work? Okay. Margaret, is your hand still up? Yeah, no, I'll let's... take it down. Sorry. Okay. Mike's hand is up. Yep. I just, uh, I know I have to depart in about eight minutes. So I didn't know if there was anything um, that you needed me to weigh in on. I mean, the sooner is better, but um, I, can, I can make it eight more minutes. But I didn't know if there were other parts of the agenda, Kathy, that you wanted me to uh, weigh so, in on. So I'm going to suggest, you know, in, in um, we can, we, we meet again. The, what I think what we can do is we can move a few to the ne to next time we meet, but I would like to just have Margaret pull up the meeting schedule um, so people know they have it. I sent it to everyone, um, and this is just a visual, Margaret, not not for discussion. So we we've agreed to meet on Fridays at eight thirty. We will try to keep these meetings to an hour and a half, um, and so the schedule that was sent out so everyone knows it is an every other week schedule. And I think in March, we have two weeks in a row because we have to take a vote. So we're gonna be looking at a draft and then we have to vote. So it's highlighted those, um, those meetings. And Donna had inserted the community forum that's coming up. Um, we're sponsoring it. So I wanna make sure everyone knows. And I will, after this meeting, I'm gonna send everyone out the, um, the brochures, the flyers, they're terrific. So instead of having a full discussion on net zero, we can report on the planned outreach. Phoebe is going to be working with the PGOs and I'll get you these flyers, you know, to try to get word out. So th this is a schedule that was sent to you. If anyone has a problem with this, I'd like to hear about it. But otherwise, it's, it's got Fridays throughout and the one exception was Donna pointed out that the, May, the week of the May 25th, if we met on Friday, it would be the Memorial Day weekend and people might prefer not meeting on a Friday just before a long weekend. So that one was maybe we would meet another date. We don't have to make that decision now, but some of the others are critical. So I, I wanted to make sure everyone's aware that you have this. And if it's okay, then I will post it up on our committee meeting site as a schedule. Some of our other, so uh, our public audience will know when we will be meeting next. And we will add to this as other community forums are scheduled. Right now, there's two scheduled, but there will be more going through to June. Can I, can I just say, Donna, I changed a bunch of these dates from what you had to kind of reset them around the school vacation. So just make sure you take, they're not the ones you originally sent, but they are bi-weekly. And that's where the um, Memorial Day weekend came up. Perfect. Yep. Whatever's final, we'll just plug it in. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you. So, so if anyone has a problem with it, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I just want to make sure that you have, you know, you have it in your packet. Um, so, Mike, um, I was going to ask you to report on the educational visioning workshops. If you have, if you want to take a minute um, to do that before we lose you, um, or two minutes, you could have two minutes, but <laughs> whatever, whatever works. Sorry about that. So, yeah, no, we had uh, one I thought really excellent workshop uh, in the morning. Um, we had uh, a, a good group of attendees. 
Uh, we talked about, uh, I think we got a lot of good feedback throughout the meeting as well as answer some questions, uh, less on the kind of building side, but more on the education side, which is great because we're talking about educational planning. So I thought that was incredibly useful. Um, we do have one plan for educators next week. Uh, and we also have one planned uh, evening uh, meeting uh, next week. So we're getting really great feedback throughout. Uh, and it's really nice to have multiple options for educators and the larger community to participate. Um, you know, I think there were some questions that we want to come back to around Comenantes and how we want to design that in the building. Uh, there was a lot of interest in outdoor learning space and uh, how that could be integrated. Those are sort of like, you know, I'm trying to think back of what are some of the sort of hanging chads that we want to really make sure we come back to because uh, they didn't really get uh, flushed out in the level of detail that we'd like in, in the meetings. So I know we'll get great feedback uh, at both of those upcoming meetings next week and continue to work on the drafting process with our, our you know, David Steven and, and Denisco. Um, but that's my quick summary, but anyone else, I know there was a number of people who were present at that. So other people could certainly weigh in on, on their perspective or their thoughts as well. Um, I'll just weigh in, in quickly for any building committee members who did not attend, you might consider doing, if you can, on the evening session, because one of the um, one of the things that's happening with the educational program visioning, there's some nice pictures that link, you know, you say this is a priority, what might that look like? So it, it starts to link the educational program to the what's in the building or what's outside the building. I, so I thought it was a, a good, I, I liked, and it has breakout rooms. So I'm gonna say one word about the community forum and then um, see whether there are any other comments before I open it up for public comments. But the community forum, you will all as building committee members receive an invite, a Zoom invite to it. It is on the February, it's on uh, February 3rd, a Thursday night, because we are sponsoring it. You are not required to come to that. So, but I need to post it both as a community forum and as a building committee meeting, because if a quorum shows up, it becomes an official meeting of the building. So I'm just explaining to you that we're going to have it. We're posting it in two different ways for purposes of the committee. Um, and it will be a Donesco presentation um, on where they are now and the schedule, what's the process, what's happening with the program sites and buildings to the extent there's information about that. And then there are gonna be breakout sessions that small groups will rotate through the breakout sessions. So this will be, Don, Jonathan had quite some time ago said, this is for us to be listening as the building committee and it's the purpose is to hear from the community. So I really encourage everybody and I'll send out this flyer, tell as many people as you know, and we're gonna, we have a small group on outreach working with the school committee to get the word out. And it's gonna be featured by the council on Monday night when the council meets. So we're gonna really try to feature the community forum as the first big launch at the community level of where we are, um, what we're doing right now at Milestones. And the, the flyers are on the Get Involved page of the website, okay? As well as a, uh, we're putting links on the, the landing page. To both of them. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so we'll send we'll send another a follow up. These are recently available. And the other thing is there is now a draft of frequently asked asked questions. Thanks to Alice and McDonald work with me, and I will send that out to you later. But we're going to double check to make sure it works for Mike, and we're going to put it up. And that will be a flexible. FAQ frequently, because as we get further along the line, we're going to have answers to some of the questions we post, and we don't have answers to some of them now and other issues. So we received a lot of comments on it's a blank page, so we're, we're trying to populate it. So are there any other, before I open it up, um, Sean has raised his hand, and are you going to tell I me where the invoices? Yes. <laughs> Okay, it's the one I forget. So we do need to, to take a public vote at the committee level on the answer invoices. So Sean will pull this up. So this is uh, the December invoice from answer.
so the total is eleven thousand two dollars and fifty cents. Um, at some point, we may want to talk about if we want to post these somewhere. If anybody has questions, they're always available. If anybody ever wants to look at them, um, well, in, and the the, in the future they'll get more complicated when we start having construction invoices and things like that. But yeah, well, and also we are submitting monthly reports to the MSBA, which I think Sean is aware of, and actually you see it reflected in this particular invoice because they're due to the MSBA on the twelfth of each month. Um, and th those reports, I, maybe I'll circulate one, a sample to this committee. Um, we can certainly put them on the website. They're available on the MSBA website. So there's just a question of, you know, if that's useful community information and where best to put it. I move to approve this invoice. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Kathy seconds it. You know, and in the future, Sean, maybe we can get it before. So to the extent if there is a comment or a question on sure. anything um, to just save time. Yeah, that sounds good. OK, um, I need you to take it down now so I can see see everyone and do a roll call vote. Um, just as I call out your name, say yes, no or abstain. Paul? Yes. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Sean? Yes. Allison? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. Ben? Yes. And Tammy? Yes. Oh, not and Tammy. There's Alicia, too. Alicia? You're, yes. She, thank you, everyone. Now, I will ask, are there any other comments before I turn it open it up for public comments? I'm not seeing any. We do have members of the public. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you'd like to make a comment. Um, and we will allow you to make the comment. And we also welcome anyone submitting comments to us um, in writing um, it, as needed. I'll wait a minute to see if any hands go up. Uh, yes, there is one person who has raised his hand. Bruce, I'm going to allow you to talk. I think I did that. Bruce, you are with us if you unmute. Bruce Coldham, uh, I just raised my hand to compliment you all on your process and the deliberative nature of this and uh, have, have nothing to add other than my voice to support what you're doing. And I thought maybe that's worth doing since uh, no one else is talking and I didn't want you to think that everybody had gone to the bathroom. Well done. Thank you. That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm... So th thank you very much. Um, we will do a quick report from the net zero subcommittee meeting. We didn't do that right now, you know, and by way of minutes, it was an excellent meeting. We had 30 plus participants, including the authors of the bylaw. Jonathan is the chair. So at the next meeting, and we don't have another subcommittee meeting set up yet, but at the next full committee meeting, Jonathan, you can report back. Um, and we may then know if we've scheduled another one. So I think I'm looking around the room. If there is no objection, I think we could adjourn the meeting. Nobody looks like they want to stay on. All right, then I will, uh, in my role as chair, I will declare us adjourned. I Thank you very, all very much for getting up on Friday morning. Thank you, everyone.